Hi, welcome back. This is the full circuit diagram for the GEC BC5645 radio. These are the items that I've discussed so far and this is the section that I want to talk about next. And moving in we can get a better view. We'll get rid of that red marker the unnecessary bits of circuit. What we have here are two valves uh, that work in the first stages of the VHF section. The valve on the left amplifies the VHF radio frequency signals uh, that come into it. The valve on the right runs as an oscillator and it also takes in the amplified radio frequency signal from the valve on the left. I talked about the HTDC in the previous video so we'll carry on and show the path of the HTDC. The positive HTDC voltage comes in the top right hand corner of the image there and uh, the negative connection of course is made via the chassis. First thing that the uh, positive voltage sees is that 0.01 UF capacitor. Then moving on to the left, uh, that uh, strange device there is the wave change switch and that is shown in the VHF position. and that means that the 0.01 UF capacitor is also in circuit and that is taking to ground any RF frequency and any radio frequency that may be present on the HT rail. Continuing to move along towards the left hand side the next item we come across is the 1000 picofarad capacitor. I've put 1000p because that's what's on the, uh, the data sheet but it's a 1000 picofarad capacitor and that's uh, a lead through capacitor or feed through capacitor. I'll show you an image of that. And this is taking any RF signal that uh, may be present in the uh, FM section it's uh, taken to ground via that 1000 pick capacitor. Although I don't show it here, you may recall that on the original data sheet, all of the components that are currently on the screen are enclosed in a metal screen, or two metal screens. Uh, the transformer underneath the 1000 pick capacitor is in its own little uh, can. That's uh, the first IF can for the FM section. So here we've got the uh, the metal screen that I talked about. Uh, this is the valve base for V1 and uh, you can see the manufacturer has arranged to have half of the valve inside the uh, VHF screen and half of it outside. I won't go into that now, but it's uh, it's an interesting thing for you to uh, to look at. That's uh, the valve base for uh, for V2 down there, and this is the lead through capacitor. That's this device here. And it comes through to this side, and uh, it connects down onto that. Uh, terminal of the IF transformer there. As I'm editing this video I've just uh, looked a little more closely at what I'm showing you and in fact the data sheet that I have faithfully copied shows that lead through capacitor in the wrong place. It's actually situated here. As I've already spent some considerable time preparing the graphics for this video I'm going to leave the capacitor where the original data sheet shows it 
it's of no great significance in this case but it's uh, a good example of how things can be misleading a good policy is to trust the evidence of your own eyes people do make mistakes and that includes me as well so if I do make any mistakes I'm sure someone will let me know so that little 1000 pic capacitor is uh, just taking care of everything that's inside the can and making sure that it uh, doesn't get out via the HT rail. So continuing the journey of the positive HT DC it travels down through the primary of the IF transformer there, first uh, IF FM transformer uh, to the anode of V2 it also goes down through the 470k resistor to the screen grid of V2 and uh, local to uh, the screen it's decoupled with the 3000 picofarad capacitor to ground. The function of the screen grid, that's the second grid up from the bottom, uh, is to enhance the performance of the valve and it's all a bit boring. Uh, suffice it to say that it has a positive DC voltage on it, but uh, essentially the valve will act as a triode. Moving on again to the left, the anode of V1 is fed via that 1K resistor and one half of the intervalve transformer above it. Again, V1's screen grid is decoupled with the 3000 picofarad capacitor. That's taking care of the HT voltages. There's further RF decoupling uh, across the filaments of each of the valves. Um, these items shown in green here are both 3000 picofarad capacitors. And they are eff effectively making sure that both sides of the filament are grounded to any RF potential. And it'll stop that RF getting out of the screened enclosure. Here I'm pointing out that the shield and suppressor grid of each valve is connected to ground. The function of the suppressor grid is to enhance the performance of the valve and I'm sure you'll find plenty of places to find um, good references uh, relating to, to that function. But uh, th these two valves will simply act as triodes and the additional grids are perform enhancing the performance but uh, they will have static voltages on them as far as we're concerned. The cathode of the valve on the left is coupled to ground via the resistor that has a value of 390 ohms and that resistor is decoupled by the capacitor to the right of it and that is a again a 3000 picofarad capacitor and you can think of it in terms of the capacitor holding the top of that resistor at a steady voltage level Together these components bias the valve. When I first started getting involved with valves I had a real problem understanding negative bias. In order for the valve to function correctly the grid of the valve, that's the control grid, the first one working up from the bottom, has to be negative relative to the other components. I want to explain how the negative bias works but again I've rambled on for so long I've run out of time. So I'll pick up uh, from this point on the next video. Thanks for the positive comments uh, that I've been receiving and I uh, hope you're enjoying the video and uh, thanks for watching. Bye bye.